In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful, super cute needle felted fish that fits inside this lovely cloche. My name is Charlotte Allen and you've reached my channel, The Felting Alchemist. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really super cute needle felted fish. It's brilliant for beginners, you don't need to have that much in terms of needle felting skills. So if you're just starting out and getting used to using the needles and the wool and things like that, this is the perfect tutorial for you. It's super easy and it's really fun to make. And the finished product is this really super cute fish that makes you just want to go, oh. He's cute. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the tutorial. So these are the materials that you're going to need for the tutorial. So first of all, you're gonna need about 20 grams of core wool. Now I've got fox sheep here. You don't have to use fox sheep if you don't want to. You can use any core wool you want as long as it's a light color because we're gonna be covering it over with different colors within the tutorial and we don't want any dark color showing through. So some kind of light colored core wool, about 20 grams. You're going to need a small amount of a white wool bat. This is white Gotland wool bat, but again, it doesn't have to be a Gotland. It can be anything you want as long as it's a nice, bright white colour. You're also going to need two different coloured wool bats that are contrasting in two of your favourite colours or two colours that you think work nicely together. So I've gone for this lovely kind of aqua blue colour in uh, one of the wool bats, and then I've gone for this candy floss pink in the other wool bats just to have a bit of contrast with my fish. And then tools wise I have here uh, my needle felting pen with two fine twisted needles inside. I also have my felting pen with two medium twisted needles inside as well for while we're working on the core of our fish. In addition to that I've also got my extra fine twisted needle for the more detailed work and also my medium cross star twisted needle too for doing again a bit more detailed work but something when I need it for more firmer felting I use this one. I've also got my needle felting mat which is kind of hidden by the wall but you can see it here it needs a clean and I've also got a, a medium length dull needle as well for when we're threading our fish later on. I've got my embroidery scissors, my needle felting brush mat, and I also have my seven needle multi-tool here to use with my brush mat. You'll definitely need a tape measure to measure out how big you want your fish to be, and also you're going to need some kind of cloche as well. Now I picked this one up in Ikea, I think it was about eight pounds. You might be able to pick one up in a charity shop as well because they were quite popular things to have a few years ago, so you might be lucky and get one there, but if in doubt, try Ikea, and they definitely sell them there. The last couple of things you're gonna be needing is some fishing line or craft line. It doesn't need to be very heavy duty because it's only something very light that we're gonna be hanging and then finally you're also going to need a glue gun this is a Bosch one that I've got that served me very well but it can be any old glue gun it doesn't have to be anything posh at all so those are the materials we're going to need for the tutorial so let's get stuck in so the first thing you want to do and I'm just going to remove the small cloche out of the way is take some uh, core wool and we're going to make a very small circular shape so I'm just going to split this and I'm not using very much here. I mean, we're talking probably about 10 grams at the most for the entire fish. So you probably want to be looking at around seven grams, something like that to make the body of the shift prior to putting any color on top. So I'm just going to take a small amount, <clears throat> which is measuring. Oh, it's a length of 35 centimeters by about four and a half centimeters in width. So all I'm going to do is take the wall, I'm going to hold it in my right hand and then with my non-dominant hand, my left hand, I'm going to fold it over initially so we've got this nice, nice straight edge here and then I'm going to fold it over again into this kind of ball shape. So we're turning the wall and we're basically, we're kind of softening those corners by pulling the wall over the corners. So any sharp corners like here, I'm going to pull the wall over that and then here, I'm going to just pull that into position and twisting if necessary, just to get that kind of rounded shape. And once you've used up all your wool, I'm gonna hold it down, I'm gonna take my medium needles, medium twisted needles, and I'm just gonna felt that down so that it can't unravel. And you always want to make sure that when you're doing any felting in close proximity to your fingers, you either want to be using needle felting finger gloves 
or you want to be using your nails as a bit of a barrier. So what I do is I kind of hold it down in kind of like a claw-like shape so that if I do end up hitting anything, I'm hitting nail varnish rather than skin, which is always better to do. You don't want to be skewering yourself with a needle. Once I did it, I wasn't concentrating stupidly and I put the needle all the way through one side of the finger to the other side of the finger. Luckily it was quite shallow, but it was quite painful. So always felt down onto the mat and whatever you do, don't air felt, which is when you're kind of holding it like this and kind of doing this because it's just a massive recipe for disaster and you can guarantee that you'll probably stab yourself at one stage of doing that. So once we've felted this down into place, the next thing we wanna do is just work on our corners. So I'm gonna hold my ball down and I'm just gonna felt downwards into those corners just to soften them off and round them. And it's all kind of very rough and ready at the moment. There's nothing too pretty about it, but we're just kind of trying to make a rounded shape with our ball. And then we can, once we've got our roundish shape, we're not making a ball as such. It's almost like we're making a kind of, um, oh, I don't know how to describe it, like a squashed ball, I guess. So it's like a ball and someone's gone bang like that down on it. We just want to get it all felted down. So then we can add some more wool and start building on our fish. Although we don't want it to be too big, as I said, because the maximum width we want to have for our body is about four centimetres. And in fact, I'm just going to measure that and just see what size we're at at the moment. So we are at about four and a half centimetres, but we haven't felted it down yet. So fear not, we're okay. We're still in the remits of the correct sizing. So I'm just going to continue to felt this down. And what I'm going to start doing now is start thinking about how I want my fish to look. So what we want is for this part to be wider and rounder and this part here at the back to be narrower and to taper downwards into our tail. So I'm going to focus on felting this part into a narrower area and then getting more of a rounded area on this bit here and then we can add more wool as we go along to create more of that fish face like shape that I've achieved in the fish I've already made. So I'm just going to felt this down. Just taking your time and every now and then when you've done a bit of felting just stop and just look at it from a distance and just see how that's looking. Turn it, make sure it's looking symmetrical because you don't want a wonky fish either. We want them to look as symmetrical as possible. So that's kind of going in the right direction for what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna keep felting that. I'm gonna keep concentrating on felting this tapered area here initially and compacting the wall down. And the nice thing with this tutorial is there's no wire to worry about. So you don't need to worry about breaking any needles by hitting any wire. So I'm just turning it the other way now and felting it down on the opposite side. And I'm kind of using my needles on an angle here as opposed to going straight down. I'm kind of going on an angle to create this kind of more diagonal shape as it's tapering. You can absolutely do that with your needle felting needles. There's no problem with that. Always be careful of your fingers, obviously, and always make sure that you're removing your needles in the same direction that you're putting them into the wall. So when you put them into the wall, make sure you're taking them out in the same direction. What you don't wanna do is put them into the wall and then bend the needles and pull them out like that, because that's how you snap your needles. Now, because I'm using medium needles at the moment, they're pretty robust. So I'm not too worried about breaking these. I mean, I am worried about breaking them because they're expensive, but in terms of their robustness, they're pretty good. But you still need to be cautious. You don't want to kind of be too heavy handed with them. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So what I want to do now is focus on the head, what's going to be the head area. Just felt that down. And what I want to achieve is this kind of almost like a snout. So you've got this part of his um, face where his eyes are going to sit is going to go inwards like this. And then this bit is going to kind of stick outwards. So you've got this kind of prominent mouth and nose-like nose -like area here. 
So what I like to do here is a technique I've demonstrated previously when I've made needle felted creatures and that's the squeezing technique. So what I'm going to start doing is start pinching the top of where the head is going to be and then I'm going to also be pinching the bottom part of where my nose or my snout, fish don't have snouts, I don't know what the technical term would be for this, but where my nose and mouth is going to sit. So that you can see there's a clear difference there between my, where my eyes are going to be and where the mouth is going to be eventually and I can see roughly how that's going to look by squeezing it into position. It's not permanent but it kind of has um, not, the, not the same properties as plasticine but it is malleable like plasticine to a degree so you can poke and pinch things into place. They won't stay there forever permanently but you can get an idea of where you want things to lie and sit so then you can felt it into place once you're happy. So I really like using this technique and it makes life a lot easier for me personally to get things placed in the areas they need to be placed properly, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go back to my needles again and I'm just going to felt where I've kind of created that eye area. I'm just going to nail my colours to the mask now and I'm going to felt that down. So what I'm doing is I'm holding my fish down so I've got the pointed end where the tail's eventually going to be on the mat and then I'm just felting into where that eye area is going to be and flattening that off. Top tip for this is don't make the nose too long because the minute you start making the nose too long and the mouth too long it starts to look like a snake which you don't want. So try and keep it relatively short when you're positioning your mouth in comparison to where the eyes are. So that's looking pretty good. And then I'm just going to start thinking about the mouth as well. And felting that down because this is all quite loose at the moment too. So we want to tighten it up. And like I said, don't worry if it suddenly becomes really small because we can just go in and add more wool. It's not a problem. And with the medium needles, you're always going to get a bit more compacting than you would with the fine needles. But we want to kind of, this is a kind of a quick make really. It's nothing too taxing. Not too taxing, but very satisfying come the end. You'll be very pleased with yourself. There's nothing that I love more than a bit of kitsch objet d'art to put in my downstairs toilet. Just makes me happy. And I've got to be honest with you, everyone that visits my toilet always comments. And I've even got a pair, because I love shoes and I love a regular choice shoes. And um, I've got a pair of Wizard of Oz Dorothy shoes in the downstairs loo on display. And they are probably the campest piece of fashion that I own to date, but I absolutely adore them. And I think, no, they're too good to not share with everybody else. So I will, I will display my camp Wizard of Oz shoes in the, in the toilet so that everybody else can admire them and hopefully love them as much as I do. Hopefully they're not trying them on though, because that's just, that's bad, that's bad guest etiquette. So I felt it along the eye area as you saw earlier. So now I'm felting downwards. So I've kind of pressed this part in. So this is kind of prominent and sticks up. And then I'm felting this part downwards to create more of this kind of nose area that I want to work on. Now, unlike the fish I've made here, I'm not actually going to have this flesh colour for this fish. I'm going to go all one colour this time. The inspiration for this fish was actually Cleo in Pinocchio. I really fell in love with her sort of classic vintage sort of 1950s look. I'm not actually sure when Pinocchio was made. It would have been around, I'd imagine it would have been around the 50s, 60s or 50s. And I really loved how they've kind of made her almost, almost a kind of Marilyn Monroe-esque kind of fish with a big pouty lips. So I haven't kind of gone for the pouty lips here, but I wanted to go with the big kind of girly doe eyes like Cleo has in Pinocchio. But this fish, I think I'm actually going to go another route and I'm going to make him quite goggly eyed. But still very cute because that is always my aim with all my sculptures is to make them look as cute as feasibly possible. Right, so I've got to the stage now where it's kind of looking like this. So you can see here, I've got his little nose there. 
I've got the tapered off area here where the body ends and the tail's going to come out. I'm going to be adding some fins here as well later and a fin up here too. So that's looking quite good. I'm just going to check and look at him front onwards and just make sure he's looking symmetrical. There's a little bit of wonkiness there. So I'm just going to go back in and I'm just going to felt, felt a bit more to get that looking a bit more even. And just create a bit more shaping. The other thing you can do is if you're using a needle felting pen, if you've got your needles here we are side by side like this. What you can do is hold them so they're lined up against each other and then just take your needles into that gap and felt into that gap. And you just get a nice smooth line by doing it that way as well, which just adds to the shaping and the character of the overall face when it's eventually finished. Okay, so I'm just gonna felt a bit more down the back end. I think I'm actually going to give him a bit of a measure as well now and just see where he's sitting in terms of measurements. So he is, help if I've got the tape measure around the right way, he is measuring at oh, about four and a half, about four and a half centimetres at the longest point still. That's fine, I'm okay with that. As long as he doesn't get any larger than that, that is not a problem. I'm just going to felt a bit more. And you can freestyle this as well, and you can kind of create your own shape. So if you don't want to go for the traditional fish, go for something a bit more blobby-like if you want to. You could go for a full-on sphere and add, add some fins to that. It will still work really well. It will still look really fishy. The other thing you could do is, if you really wanted to mess around, is you could do a little a little jellyfish. So I'm just gonna work a bit more on the underside. Just gonna look at him as well and see again, making sure that he's symmetrical at all times. Because wonkiness really bothers me. Some people. I don't, I don't see myself as someone with OCD and I'm not overly, I can, and I can be a perfectionist, but I think I, I'm generally pretty relaxed compared to a lot of people. But if something isn't symmetrical and it's meant to be symmetrical, it really, really bothers me. And it will, I will literally, I'll literally lose sleep over it. I'll just be thinking about it. I'll be like, no, not happy with that I need to do something about that and then I'll usually start all over again because it just really annoys me okay how's he looking he's looking awesome I'm just going to go a bit more under the underside I want to make sure I've got enough space to add his eyes as well we're not going for like massive eyes but even so we still want to make sure that there's enough space to incorporate those into the piece and I'm just tidying up a bit now and just getting everything looking nice and even before we then go in and start adding our beautiful colours. Once you get to this stage, don't, do, don't go too hard with your medium needles. Just take them in a bit more lightly um, so you're not overly compacting the wall now. So at this stage, I want to start thinking about where I want to put his eyes. So you could go central. You could go at the side of his head like you would see on a normal fish, but I'm going to go somewhere in the middle, I think, and try and get it looking natural but cute because ultimately this fish does not look like a real fish. I think if you found this fish in your fish pond, you'd probably have some serious concerns and, and be worrying about what kind of pollutants are in your water at home. Um, so we're going for more of a Pixar-y kind of fish, I guess. I'm not going Nemo um, because... Um, if anybody from Disney is watching, they'd be very upset about that. But I'm going to kind of take my inspiration from that pixar -y look that they get with the fish in Finding Nemo and go for something super cute and super little. I think I'm even going to go for quite 
oversized eyes for the fish's head to make it look younger and more like a baby fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, medium twisted cross star needle and I'm just going to very lightly create a little indentation roughly where I think the eye should go. And then just a bit more there and then the same on the other side. And by doing this you can start seeing a bit more shape to the head, it creates a bit more personality as well, which I really like. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but something like that, so you've got that indentation there. What I want to do now is now that I'm happy with where those eyes are sitting, I'm then gonna go back in with my medium needle and I'm just gonna create a larger area for the eyes to go. So I'm gonna create myself a little eye socket for our little fishy fish fish. What should we call our fish? Freddy, a bit obvious. Felicity, Felicia fish. I'm gonna carry on felting this down and I wanna create quite a, quite a large hole for my eye sockets because I'm gonna be putting quite large eyes inside. So I'm just gonna take my needle and I'm just going to go out a little bit and expand that eye socket that I've started to make and then the same on the other side and all I'm doing is I'm just pressing the wall inwards and then I'm kind of doing it in a anti-clockwise rotation to create this circular cavern for the eyes to sit he still needs a little bit of manipulation every now and then. He's starting to, he looks a bit like a baby shark at the moment. So something like that is what you want to aim for. So now we've got his eyes in place. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some colour to him. So I'm going to add this really beautiful bluey greeny wall bats from um, a company called The Makers, who are a UK based company that specialise in needle felting walls and tools and everything else that you can imagine. I'm not sponsored by them, I just really like buying some bits and pieces from them. They're not the cheapest, but they do sell some really lovely walls and some really great tools as well. So what I want to do is I want to take a little bit of my wool, not loads and loads, I'm just going to put the rest to one side, and I'm just going to place it over my fish. And then I'm going to take my fine twisted needles now, and I'm just going to start felting that over the core wall that we've just shaped. You don't want anything too thick. I've got a couple of layers here, but you want to build on it rather than adding loads of wool that's really thick all in one go because then it's quite difficult and you're kind of creating a lot of work for yourself to get that shape back that you've already created. So just go a bit at a time and also if you add too much what you'll end up with is lots of folds and things like that where you're trying to get the wool nice and evenly placed over the, the piece that you've created. So just go a little bit at a time and you'll be fine. And I'm doing really light stabbing motions here. I'm not going too crazy because I don't want to destroy what we've already done. I just want to enhance. You'll also find that this makes your fish a tad bigger as well. Not massively, but just a little bit, you know, because you're adding more wool to it. So it will get bigger, but it's not going to be a big deal it'll still fit nicely inside your cloche. Obviously you need to adapt the measurements if your cloche is say this size or if you've got a smaller cloche or a really big cloche. I do love a cloche. I just find them really quite magical, especially when you see these cloches. I don't know if, if you've ever watched Escape to the Chateau with Dick and Angel. I absolutely love that program. And they've got this beautiful cloche in there i think it's in the salon and it looks like it's got this very ornate beautiful golden clock inside and every time they show it on the program i almost want to pause my tv so i can see it better because it's just so incredibly beautiful and it just makes me 
it just reminds me of books like The Secret Garden and The Nutcracker and things like that. All those kind of beautiful storybooks with you know, so much magic and whimsy in them. So I do enjoy Escape the Chateau. I think they, they do amazing things on there. They're very, very clever, very inspirational people. So gradually getting there. So as you can see, my fishy is starting to take on his lovely, beautiful new colour. Frank, I think I'm going to call this fish. Frank the fish, I like that name. And I'll come back to you in a second once I've covered him. Okay, so I've added all the blue over the initial core wall that we shaped into the fish shape, and he's now covered. So he's looking a bit like a strange kind of head shape now, but you can still see that he's obviously tapered down the back end, and then at the front we've got his little nose and where his mouth's gonna sit eventually, and then the area where his eyes are gonna go, and that is what we're gonna work on next. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna move my fish to one side, and I'm gonna take some white Gotland wall bats. Now you don't have to use Gotland, you can use any wool bats you want, but it does need to be white ideally, just because we want to get a nice white eye. So what I'm going to do is going to take a strip of this, and then I'm just going to split it in half again. So you've got something that's measuring around about, if I just get my trusty tape measure again, um, it's about 16, 17 centimetres in length, and then about one centimetre in width. And all we're going to do is we're going to make a ball shape. If you're not sure how to create a ball shape, check out my video on how to create a needle felted ball, and that will give you a good guide as to what you need to do next. But I'm going to take you through it, but just probably a little bit more quickly than I would do if I was showing you in a tutorial just purely on making a ball. So what you need to do is just hold the wall very much like when we made the fish a moment ago in your right hand or your dominant hand if you're left-handed and then we're just going to fold over the top like so so we have this nice straight edge here then all we're going to do is start folding it over nice and tightly and then twisting our ball and getting rid of those any corners that we might have so this sharp corner here like we did with the fish a moment ago we're just going to fold that into the ball and make it nice and round and then once you get to the stage where you're happy with your ball shape, I'm just going to tear off the excess. This is where it gets a little bit dicey with your fingers. You may want to put finger gloves on for this. I'm just going to hold this down. I'm going to take my fine twisted needles. I'm just going to felt that down, felt that end down into the wall. I'm just going to twist it over and felt it over again. Ooh, and that's why we use our nails. Okay. So I'm just going to give that a roll with my hands, so we're creating more of a ball-like shape. And then I'm just going to go in again with my needle, and I'm just going to make that very tiny wall ball. And just be really cautious and just either use a nail to hold this down, because it is quite tiny and can be a bit tricky, or use a felting glove. The only problem I have with felting gloves, and they are great, and we don't want to slag them off or anything but because they're quite big when you're doing fine work like this they can be a bit cumbersome and a bit tricky to to then grab hold of the wall which is why I tend not to use them rightly or wrongly so there's pros and cons for using them I mean they are great and they do protect your fingers and when my daughters who are five and six needle felt I always ensure that they wear gloves because their concentration is, is zero and they're kind of looking over in another direction and kind of stabbing on the mat. So it's kind of a must for them that they wear finger gloves. But if you're feeling confident and you want to kind of try and get more precision, then, you know, just, just try it without. As long as you're concentrating, you can't really go too far wrong. Okay, so that is our first ball shape there and what that's going to do is that's going to sit in our fish's face there so 
So I'm going to make another one the same size now. So I'll see you in a moment once I've made that. Okay, so I've finished making the second ball. So we've now got two white wool bats balls that are about the same size that are going to make our fish's eyes. So the next thing we want to do is take our fishy fish fish, Frank, and we're just going to place those into position. So they're going to sit in those eye sockets that we made earlier on. So they're going to be about here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to take my single needle this time, which is the medium twisted star needle, and I'm going to felt around the outside. So I'm using my finger and my nail to hold it down. Okay, don't want to be holding it down like this, you want to be holding it down like this. So you're using your nail again. And I'm going to felt around the peripheral of the ball. Once you've got it tacked down, you don't need to have your finger anywhere near it then. You can just felt it, felting downwards in a downwards motion into that eye socket that you've made. Try not to felt too much down the centre of the eye because we don't want to lose that bulbousy look that we're trying to create. Um, try and focus on the peripheral around the edge of the white ball that you've just added. But do a few stabs down the middle just to make sure that it's all nice and securely felted down into place. And once you've done the first one, you can then go ahead and do the second one. So again, using your fingernail, hold it down, felt around the peripheral to lock it into position, anchor it down, and then once you've got a few stabs in, you can just let go and then felt that down into place too. Concentrating around the peripheral, and then a little bit in the centre. And I'm just going to look at him now because this is where we want to make sure that they look the same. You could go for one eye bigger than the other and to be fair, that would look quite cool. You, you could have something a bit quirky looking like a bit of a, a monster fish. But I want my eyes to be roughly the same size. Annoyingly, this one's slightly bigger. That's why it's really important just to get them the right size beforehand. But it doesn't matter too much if they are, if one is slightly bigger, because we can always felt it down to get it looking similar in size. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so I've felt those both into place now. So the next thing we want to do is just do a bit more shaping. And I want to just felt around this, between the eyes where you've got this nose area. I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit more, just a touch, probably about a millimetre high. So we're going to be felting sort of just this little section here down a bit more. And it just makes the the mouth and the nose area, that little bit more prominent as well, and also gives a bit more height and shaping to the forehead of our fish. Because fish tend to have these quite large foreheads. From what I can tell from the fish that, that I've met. I also have to apologize if you can hear banging in the background. Um, that is, well, my daughter has a hamster who she calls Penny, but I like to call Penny Paula because she reminds me of Paula Radcliffe um, because she kind of just wheeze anywhere and she goes for a nightly 50 mile run every single day. So Paula's up there in her wheel, giving it some beans, bless her. So it does sound like we have an intruder in the house, but it's okay. It's just, it's just a hamster. You wouldn't believe that she was tiny. She is, but creates lots of noise. Okay. okay, so we've got our eyes into place and I've just flattened this little area here where his kind of forehead sits, just to give a bit more shaping and a bit more personality to the overall look of his face. Now, the next thing we want to do is add some pupils to the eyes of our fish. So I'm gonna put him down and I'm gonna get some of my brown merino wool. And you just want a pinch of wool. You don't want loads and loads. And I'm just gonna separate this into half. And I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna pull that in half again because we don't wanna to have too much. Once you've got a pinch like this, which is kind of like a little, a wisp of wool if you like, I'm just gonna roll it between my fingers to create a little ball. And the warmth of my fingers will muddle the fibers together. So you don't really need to do too much felting at this stage. So you should have something that looks like 
this in my hand. And I'm just going to do a second one now and try and get it as close as possible to the same size as that first one that I've just made. And then once I've made the two, what I like to do is just hold them between my fingers and you can usually tell if you roll them at the same time between your fingers if one is a bit smaller than the other and this one is so I'm just going to get a bit more wool for this one not loads just a bit okay that feels about right so there we go we have our two balls of similar size and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the pupils for the eyes up and inwards so he looks a bit cross-eyed, but he also looks like he's kind of looking up at you, which I think is quite a cute look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fine needle now, my super fine needle, and I'm just going to replace that, and take out the medium needle, put that into my holder, and then I'm just going to do a few very light stabs just to initially lock it into place. We're aiming to get a nice circular shape here. I'm not worried about there being any white wool on this part of the eye where the brown's sitting. I'm quite happy that that sits against the blue because I want it to be quite a large brown pupil. And I'm just gonna felt that down until it's all nice and neatly locked into place using very light stabbing motions. I'm not going heavy handed with this. So you've got something that eventually looks like that. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'll see you in a second. Right, so once you've added the brown to the eyes, they should look something like this. So you've got these two rather large brown dots that are kind of situated in the upper inner corner of the eye and you want the dots to be probably about a third of the size of the white eye that you've already added. So the next thing we need to do now is add some light to the eyes and that will really bring out the personality and the character of our little fish. So I'm going to go back to my white wall and I'm going to take another couple of tiny tiny pinches this time of white Gotland wool bats and I'm going to roll them between my fingers. We want to go really small, we don't want to go too big with this because this is going to be the light reflecting in our little fish's eye. So I've got these two very tiny dots here which are quite small and they're going to compact down nicely and I'm going to place these dots, oh shut off, where's it gone, there it is. I'm going to place these dots again in the inner upper corner of our eye. So here and here. Oops, doesn't want to stay there. Just like that. So I'm going to felt those down. So I'm going to take that one off. I'm going to stick with my super fine needle and I'm going to felt this again so that it's against the blue that we've already added. So you've got some on the brown, some on the blue. And this is going to be probably again about, this is going to be about a quarter of the size of the brown that we've added already. So you're aiming for something that looks like this, okay? So I'm just gonna add in the second one. And again, you wanna get the same position, as closest to the same position as possible. So just keep checking for your symmetry to make sure that it's looking the same as the other side, so you don't have any wonky eyes. The second one's always harder because you're trying to get it as close to the first eye that you've added as possible it is worth it to get that symmetry and get it looking nice and neat. So you've got your two sort of pupils or the light of his eye added now and now we want to go in with a second white dot which is going to create more light in his eye and again create lots more character. So I'm going to take some more of my Gotland white wool bats and we're going to take an even tinier piece this time. So super duper teeny tiny, so small you can barely see it. And we want it to be about at least half the size of the white we've already added, if not smaller. It's just a tiny little fleck, nothing too dramatic. And we're going to place it underneath on an angle in the brown, sort of an, in, on an angle to the white we've already added. So sticking with my twisted, fine needle. I'm just 
going to felt this down. This time, really focus on felting down the centre. And we want, to this, we want this to be surrounded in the brown pupil. We don't want this to be going against white because you'll lose that light reflecting look that we're going for. And we want it to be smaller because otherwise people are going to be confused as to what's pupil and what's light in his eye. So like that. And I'm just going to go in with the second one and do the same thing. So there we have it, the eyes are finished and you can see how the simple technique of just adding those dots of white really make the eye look super cute and also give it that really lovely youthful, almost babyish kind of look to our fish. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to add a mouth to our fish and I'm thinking of going for quite a small smile this time, nothing too big, but we're going to do a couple of tweaks just to again really ramp up the cuteness so that when someone looks at him they're going to be kind of thinking, oh my goodness, I can't look at this fish, it's just so goddamn cute. So what we want to do is we want to think about where we want to place our mouth. So we've already created this kind of bulbous area here where, where our mouth's going to sit, but it, now it's a question of where is it going to sit within this bulbous area. So I'm going to take some of my brown merino again, and I'm going to take a very small pinch, and I'm going to roll it between my fingers to create this kind of rope or string-like effect. So you've got something like this. So the warmth of your fingers are again muddling those fibres together so they sit nicely together. Then I'm going to take my embroidery scissors and I'm just going to snip that in half. So you have a piece of brown merino wool that isn't too long, it's probably about two inches in length, but we're not going to need all of this. So once you've got your merino, what you want to do is start thinking about roughly where the mouth can sit, because depending on where you place it, will make a big difference as to the overall finish of what your fish is going to look like when it's completed. So I'm just going to turn mine round a second and I'm just going to have a play with my fish's mouth and where I want it to sit. It looks quite cute in all locations but I think I'm going to have it probably about here I think. So once you've decided on roughly where you want your fish's mouth to go, Go back to your needle, use your fine needle, don't use your medium needle because we don't want it to be compacted in too much at this stage because what happens when you use a medium needle doing something very detailed like this is that it, it presses the wool in so much you end up with a very uneven line because parts of the wool sit awkwardly within the mouth. It's very difficult to explain. Um, Whereas if you're using a fine needle, you get a much smoother, neater finish. So I'm just going to spin him round. And I'm not going for a really wide mouth here. Um, I'm going to cut some of this away in a moment. I'm just felting down what I need. And I'm actually going to take this piece here and I'm just going to felt that over itself just to create a bit more thickness in my fish's smile. And I'm just going to cut away any excess that I don't need, like so, with my embroidery scissors. So once I've cut the excess away, I'm then just going to carry on felting this down. And we want it to, to kind of be inside the wall. So we don't want the mouth to sit flush against the fish because I just think it doesn't really give a very realistic finish to the overall sculpture. Whereas if it's actually sat inside the fish's mouth, it gives an impression of more depth to our sculpture. So I'm going to felt this down and it can take a bit of time to get it to the stage where it's looking nice and natural and inset, but it is well worth it for the finished article. So I will be back with you in a second once I've felted this down. Okay, so I've felted the mouth in and I've actually added in an extra layer of the brown merino just to give him a slightly heavier looking smile, just to create a bit more depth there and a bit more cuteness. Now the next thing you can do once you've got the smile in place is swap out your extra fine needle and go back in again with your medium needle. And then we're going to add some little smile dimples to our, our fish's face. So all you need to do is just take your needle, pop that down, it's a bit loose, and we're going to create two little divots at the corners of his smile. Nothing too major, 
just a little indentation that's just a little bit larger in diameter than the corner of the mouth and then the same on this side and it lifts the face by doing this by creating these little smile dimples and gives a bit more character and expression to the sculpture and if you do this you might need to just felt down the smile a bit more because as you felt down these corners this wall kind of sort of almost displaces and gets pushed up a bit so it might be that you just need to do a bit more felting along the mouth but nothing too major just a little bit of light felting just to get it a bit more deeply set again so you've got his smile dimples in now what I want to do next is I want to go back into his eyes I'm going to swap out my medium needle again and go back to my super fine twisted needle and I just want to add a bit more expression to his eye area. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a couple of little lines just under his eyes, just to lift his face. So where he's smiling, his eyes are kind of going upwards as well. So I'll show you now what I mean. So I'm just going to take my needle, I'm just going to felt this underneath his eye. I'm going in very lightly, I'm not going in too heavy handed with this and I'm probably taking it, I'm taking it under the eye in an upwards flick, it's probably about a centimetre and a half, so something like this, okay, so I'm just going to do the same on the other side, I'm just checking and making sure it's the same as the side I've already done, it's the same length and everything else. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add some little eyebrows and I'm just going to do some little bows with my fine needle again, about half a centimetre up from where his eye sits. I'm just going to felt that down. And I'm just using my needles to just make that indentation into his face. So we don't need to add any wool so like on this fish here I've used some brown merino to create her eyebrows but that's because I wanted to create more of a feminine look with this fish we're going for a kind of more cute look and more subtle so I'm going for the a deep indentation rather than actually adding additional wool and additional color to create the eyebrows I'll just do the same on the other side and we're very soon we're going to be ready for the last part which is adding in our fins there you go so his eyebrows are now added so the next thing i want to do is take my tape measure and just measure roughly how long we want his top fin to be so his oh he's escaping he wants to escape off to the sea already you can't mate you haven't got any fins so the back half of him is measuring about three centimeters so I reckon if we aim for about two and a half centimetres for his fin at the top and then his fin at the bottom, I reckon if we aim for about two centimetres, the fins at the side don't matter too much because, um, you know, they're, they're not going to encroach on the cloche as such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him out of the way and I'm going to bring in my trusty brush mat. And I'm actually probably going to just go straight in with the wall now normally I'd say you'd want to create a core wall and then add your top coat but because he's so small we can probably get away with just using the color straight away without having to use a core wall underneath and then just getting it into shape and it's not going to be overly expensive because it's such a small sculpture so, so for the fin I'm going for this lovely beautiful pink merino wall bats so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to layer about, let's go with two in the first instance, two layers of this pink merino wool bats and I'm just going to felt it down and then flip it on the other side once you felt it the first side until you end up with a, what's almost like a piece of felt material. You've got something that looks like this so it's nice and strong it's a bit fuzzy but it's almost like a solid piece of material so the next thing I want to do I'm gonna obviously take into account the size of my fish and how long I want my fin to be 
I'm just going to slice the bottom of this piece of wool off with my embroidery scissors so I've got a nice straight area to work with. The next thing I want to do is take my tape measure and I want to work out roughly where that measurement of three centimetres sits on this wall. So it's about here. Okay. So I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm just going to mark that. So here and here. Okay, so that's my measurement for roughly where I want my fin to be. So I'm going to freehand this, but you could make yourself a template, which would be the much more sensible thing to do. So you can make yourself a template out of card, draw how large you want your fin to be, and then just hold it over the top of the wall and then cut around it. I'm actually just going to go freestyle and freehand this now. So I'm going to take it up and cutting, cutting, cutting. And then I'm just going to take it down, taper it downwards, like so. So you want to have a slightly higher round a bit here, and then you want to taper it downwards, like you would see with a fish's fin, if a fish was blue and had a pink fin. So what, I, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a bit more of my pink wool, a much finer layer this time, and I'm just going to place it over the top of what we've just trimmed. And I'm just going to felt that down. And then I'm going to flip it over on the other side. And all of these loose pieces of wool here that are hanging out the sides, I'm just going to fold those over onto the fin that we've cut. So it's kind of locking into place that cut edge where I've cut that shape. I'm going to leave this bottom bit here. I'm going to leave this loose. I'm actually going to add a little bit more and I'm going to focus it more towards the bottom this time. And again, flipping it over and then just folding over any of that looseness on the sides, but leave the bottom loose. Don't felt this too much because the more you felt it, the fluffier it's going to get because you're pulling it off of the mat, creating that fluff. So you want to kind of limit yourself a little bit with the felting. Don't go too crazy. You're going to always get a little bit of fluff, but you want to try and minimize it as much as possible. So we've got our first fin. So all I'm going to do is bring in... So we have our first fin. So the next thing I'm going to do is just bring back my mat. And then we're going to place, so the rounder part is going to be placed at the top and then the tapered part is going to be placed at the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to splay out those rough bits of wool that we had a moment ago because these are going to be our anchor points for anchoring this into our fish. Then I'm just going to place it in the middle. Take it back a little bit. I'm going to place it so that it's not too, too near the top of our fish's head. And then I'm just going to take my fine needles and I'm just going to felt that either side where you've got those fluffy bits that we're using as an anchor. And what you'll find here is that where those fluffy bits are nice and fine, it creates almost a, quite a nice ombre effect on the blue of the fish that you've already added. Of course, it always helps if you add it and it actually is central. Tack it down just a touch, first of all. Don't go too mad felting it down. So then you can make sure that it actually is central, whereas it wasn't a moment ago. So I've repositioned it and I'm going to felt it down again now. Once you've got it into place, what you can do then is start actually felting against the main body of wool where the fin is and shaping that a bit as well. You can even shape down the kind of the narrower part of the, the fish's fin if you wanted to. Obviously be careful because you haven't got a lot of resistance here, so it can be quite tricky. It's something that is 
it's quite good to do to give more shape to your fin. Just going to go down the sides again and felt it down. Okay, so eventually you should get to the stage where your fish is looking a little bit like this. So you've got this nice ombre look where the pink is then merging in with the blue, but it's very subtle. And I actually did add a little bit more of the pink and I'm basically just taking a small pinch and it's almost opaque in terms of the amount that I've used. It's very, very minimal. And then I've just placed it again against the fin and then I've just felt it down that small amount against the rest of the body as well. Being careful not to felt any pink over the eyes or anything like that but it just gives a nice ombre look to our fish and just makes them a bit more interesting so the next thing we want to do is add our two fins either side so we're going to go back to our brush mat so move you out of the way bring the brush mat in and again I'm going to take some more of the pink wool and I'm just going to place some on top of one another like so. Onto the brush mat, and then I'm just going to start this down again in the same way, in the same way we did a moment ago. And then flip it over, start down the other side. this one. Okay, so you should have two pieces like this now, similar to what we made a moment ago. Now I'm actually going to make quite a small fin. I want him to have quite small fins either side. I don't want him to have... So I'm actually going to make some quite small fins. I don't want to have him to have two larger fins either side of him. So I'm just going to cut out something relatively small, but the same shape as we have on the fish that I've already made. So I'm just going to go... And then once I've cut out the first one, I'm just going to hold it over the second piece of wool material that we've made, and I'm just going to use that as a template to cut out my second one. So you should have two roughly equally sized pieces of wool. So we want to do the same thing that we did last time. We're going to take some small amounts of the same coloured pink wool and just place them on top of what we've just cut out. And then I'm going to go back to my seven needle multi-tool and I'm just going to felt that down. And then just flip it over. Now this time we want to make sure that that straight edge that we've cut, that's the area where we want to have our fuzz, our pink fuzz. So I'm just going to fold everything else over to create that nice neat edge so nothing's going to come undone. I'll just flip it over and do the same on the other side. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. try and keep this as small as we can really we don't want anything too big so you've got two pieces now and my pieces are measuring it's going to be about a centimeter I reckon oh no it's about two centimeters in width by about with all the fluff three centimeters in length so again I'm going to remove my brush mat and I'm going to bring back in my regular felting mat and then I'm just going to take my fins and I'm just going to place them roughly where I think they need to sit. So probably about there looks good to me. So I'm just going to splay them out again like we did last time. Put them. So you want to place them so they're kind of almost underneath the fish. So we don't want them up here. I mean, you can put them up there if you want to, but I think they look more natural to be placed around here under the kind of the chin of our fish, if you like. So I'm just going to splay that out and I'm just going to place it there. And then I'm just going to take my fine needles again and just felt that down into position. Just tacking initially. 
just to make sure it looks okay and looks like a natural position for the fin to go in. That looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to go in and tack in the second one while, while I'm here as well. So I can get it as close as to the other one as possible. Right there, I reckon. So now I've tacked them into place, I'm going to felt them and secure them into place properly. So I'll be back in a second once they're felted down. Okay, so we've got our two fins in place as well now. So we've got three fins in total. So the last thing we need to do is add his tail. So I'm going to again move my felting mat out of the way, bring my brush mat back in. And I'm going to take some more of the pink wool. And I'm just going to layer that on top of one another again. So we don't want this to be too long. We want this to be about three centimeters max in its length in terms of how far it sticks out from the bottom of our fish. So I'm just going to felt this down. I mean this tutorial is great for beginners because it literally, apart from a bit of fishing line, all it is is just wool and needles, nothing else. You don't need to make an armature or anything like that. It's super straightforward and simple and you get a really lovely, cute looking finished product at the end of it as well. So I'm just going to keep felting that down. Okay. So what I want to do now is create a tail from this. So I'm just going to move my brush mat out of the way. So what you could do is again you could create a template if you wanted to or you could just draw it straight onto your wall and I just use a pencil and I just like to mark out roughly what it's going to look like very lightly. So nothing too dramatic. And then once it's kind of marked out, I'm just going to measure it. So you can see there, hopefully, where I've got my pencil drawing, where I've kind of marked out where my tail is going to be. So I'm going to take my embroidery scissors and I'm just going to cut where I've just marked out. It might be easier initially just to create a template, especially if you're planning on making more in the future, if you want to make them for friends and family, or if you want to sell them or anything like that. Okay, there we go. So this is measuring this piece. It's going to be, it's going to be five centimeters, but that is okay because not all of this is going to be sticking out of our fish. I'm actually going to split some of this and have it I'm just using my fingers just to pull it apart a bit and have it sat like this so we're using again this bit here as a bit of an anchor to anchor it into place so what I'm going to do is bring my brush mat back in and we're just going to lock those bits of wool into place by felting over it so we don't get any fraying or anything like that over, just felt down. You might want to go in with some double needles here just to create a bit more shaping because the multi-tool is a bit cumbersome for doing detail but I'll show you how to do that now. going to go back in again with a little bit more of the pink wool like so just felt that down into what we've cut flip it over and then just bring those edges over our tail shape and felt them down So, and 
then what you can do is you can go in with your single or your double needle pen and just very carefully keeping your fingers out of the way just felt back in any shape that you may have lost from the from the multi felting from the needle from the seven needle multi tool once I've done that I'm just going to move my brush back out of the way bring this back in and then just do a bit more felting against the mat just to get that shape of that tail back in there remember to keep turning and lifting anything that you're felting in close contact with your felting mat so that it doesn't stick and end up bound to the felting mat because it's just pulling it off is a bit of a nightmare and then you'll end up Best case scenario is it's very fuzzy. Worst case scenario is your, your shape that you've made is just completely destroyed and you have to start all over again. So just keep lifting it and you shouldn't have any issues. I'm just felting down those points, getting a bit more depth and shape into my tail. down that middle area again so once I've got to a stage where I'm happy with my tail I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna take my embroidery scissors and just snip down the middle a little bit just to create those two halves that I can use as an anchor to felt them down onto my fish and then I'm just gonna go in right at the very back and I'm gonna overlap with this part of the fin that I added first and then I'm just going to take my fine needles again and I'm just going to felt that down and because this this is central it should be nice and easy then to get this in line and get it in the right position so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just felting in some more of the tail by grabbing some from the side and then felting it down into the body of the fish. That helps to bring some more of the tail into the body of the fish itself. So it's a little bit shorter, not quite as long, and also creates a bit more shape as well to the tail of our fish. Okay, so eventually your tail fin should look something like this. So it's all been felted down using those wispy ends that we splayed out and then just felted into the fish. So again, we've got this nice kind of balayage look. Now, what you could also do if you wanted to, like I have done with the fish over here, is you could add some stripes to your fish just to create a bit more interest in the tail and the fins. I'm happy with how he looks. I'm gonna keep him nice and simple. So the next thing I wanna do is make him look like he's floating in our cloche. So I'm gonna take a doll needle and some fishing line, which is ironic because he's a fish. So I have my doll needle here, and these are really useful things to get if you can get hold of them. I bought mine on Amazon in a pack of three, and they were really cheap. It was about three pounds for the three of them. And they're great for doing things with your needle felting if you're gonna make a mobile or anything like that, or if indeed you're gonna be making a doll or something like that, they're really great needles to have. So I've got my doll needle, and I'm gonna take some of my fishing line. I don't need too much because he's not going to have to drop down very much. So I'm just gonna take a small amount. And the nice thing with fishing line is it's transparent. So it looks like your fish is floating. So the piece I've taken here is probably about 20 centimeters, but you're not gonna need all of this. I've just allowed myself a little bit extra because I'm really rubbish at tying knots. And it just gives me a bit of leeway for how to tie a knot. So you want to thread your doll needle with the craft line, which should be quite easy because you've not got a nice big eyelet to go through with your doll needle. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to press your doll needle through the bottom of your fish. And then ideally you want to come out 
around the middle of the top fin so somewhere around here-ish I'm just going to try and get it a bit more central there we go spot on so you want to come out this area here if you can and it can be a bit tricky this part because you haven't got a lot of wool to play with but it just gets a nice central area for your line to come out of when he's hanging I'm just going to move my doll needle out of the way and then I'm just going to tie a knot in the bottom part just a simple knot where I'm going to do a couple of loops just so I know that that line isn't going to go through our fish and he's quite light to be fair so it's unlikely that that would happen but I just like to be super cautious and then once you've tied your knot I don't know if you can see but I'm just going to snip really close to the end of the knot get rid of that excess and just pull that through so now you have a floating fish the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take my cloche okay so now you've got your fish on its fishing line what we want to do is we want to create um, something to stick him into our cloche. So I've got my glue gun here. <coughs> Apologies. I'm getting taken over by the fumes. And I'm just going to place very carefully. Go careful because you don't want your cloche to crack. But I'm going to place some of the hot glue in the thickest part of the cloche. Like so. The nice thing with a glue gun is it all dries clear, so it shouldn't be visible once everything's in place. Then I'm going to place my fish inside the cloche, and then I'm going to take my doll needle and the end that isn't sharp, I'm going to use to push my wire into place and just let it set there for a few minutes. You want to take your embroidery scissors, and just snip away the excess and shake that out. And then you're left with this beautiful floating fish cloche. So there you have it. Your fish is finished and he's floating in his lovely cloche. And it just reminds me of how versatile cloches are and how much you can do with them. I really hope I've inspired you to start thinking about using cloches in your work. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and thank you for liking this video. I will see you tomorrow with more handy needle felting hints and tips. See you then. Bye.